For more on all of this, we are joined by one of our regulars, Robin Farzad. He's a senior writer for Business Week. Good to see you again, Robin. Thank you for having me, Dalton. So, you know, historically, September and October are, are the worst months for the U.S. stock market. When you look at what's going on in China with this serious fall in their markets, does this portend um, a sell-off for U.S. markets? I think it demonstrates the longing of, of outside spectators. Uh, to the situation in China to try to get almost a daily gauge on this incredible economic machine. And the problem with doing that is the Chinese stock market, for all of its uh, wonderful run over the past few years, is still in its infancy. There isn't all that much transparency. Uh, the Chinese relationship, individual investors with the stock market, is very often based on superstition. Stocks pop when they close the previous day at uh, something that has to do with the number eight. I mean, it's notoriously echo chamber, something that approximates the United States stock market in the early 20th century. But then again, China is a legitimately rapidly growing economic giant. So I think it speaks to this conflict and dichotomy. Mm. And what, what precisely is behind China's fall? I mean, it was around, what, 20 percent? The worry is that China's potentially overheating. Uh, bank loans have been a significant part of the recovery in China, which we've seen really slam out of the gates. Um, the expansion of credit is something that worries policymakers there because it's one thing to have an economy that's brimming at 8 or 9 or 10 percent growth. It's another thing to have an economy that's inflating and is going to be twice as unwieldy to control after the fact. So you get all these conflicting messages almost daily from government bureaucrats and regulators there. We need to control the situation. We need to put a cap on speculation in the markets. Then others are giving more free market signals. And so you get these wild swings in the stock market, up one day 6%, down 7% the next day. And it's just quite a sight to behold for us Westerners. Do you think that the market drops that signal uh, slower economic growth? And, and if, if that is the case, what does it mean for our economy and for the economies of the rest of the world? Paradoxically, the market drops there aren't having to do with the fear of slower economic growth, but overheating, which is a problem, actually. It's a great problem to have right now. Unfortunately, the rest of the world is in the tank. But China is worried about growing too fast. And it's difficult to read into the Chinese market. It's bifurcated into a class of shares for the Chinese people domestically and a class that outsiders can own. So a lot of this reflects pent-up demand from a massive population that's eager to partake in their economic boom. So I would caution against reading too much into it, but certainly it's one of those things where you can't help but look every morning. And there is a concern that once the stimulus packages that we are trying to implement around the world, when they come to an end, uh, we might be left with no recovery at all. This is the $64 trillion question right now. Uh, central banks and governments the world over are just flooding the plane with all manner of stimulus, cutting interest rates down to near zero, tax policy, cutting rates here, clash for clunkers. Uh, let's see if the economy globally can actually get up on its own two legs when and if invariably governments have to pull back this money. And that's why I think economies are giving outsized attention to the experiment in China right now because that is where we are seeing such a pocket of growth. Okay, Robin Fazad, good to see you again. Thank you. My pleasure.